Hello and welcome back to part two of setting up your Synology in 2020. As mentioned in my previous video, I am utilizing the brand new Synology DS2020+. Plus. However, it's worth noting that the steps we're going through during these videos apply to pretty much all disk station NAS devices. And therefore, although you're not gonna be, you know, might not be completely identical and there'll be the odd tiny difference, this two bay plus series NAS from Synology is largely representative of the majority of NASs. There may be a few extra apps that you don't see, or there'll be a few choices extra for the more powerful NASs, but ultimately this will be largely the same for you as anyone else. In my previous video, I set up the NAS straight from the retail box. I got the latest DSM installed, I set up a mapped network drive, and I set up the device for the very first time, including shared folders, the RAID, and a volume. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install applications and how to create user groups. This is going to be particularly useful to those of you that want to utilize this NAS device um, in a home or small business environment where different users have got different user needs and user priorities. And then afterwards you can make sure that different applications only are accessible by different users. Now throughout the course of this video I am recording with the screen recording software OBS. The result is that sometimes there might be the odd bit of pixelation while this is going on. I do apologize in advance if that happens and hopefully it won't happen at all. But you never know because we are using a graphical user interface via Chrome, that ever hungry web browser. So the first thing we want to do is create some users. These are users that are going to be able to access this Synology NAS independently of not just the admin, but they'll have their own rights. So the first thing we need to do to create users is head to the control panel. The control panel is where pretty much everything's done on this device, as you would expect. By default, it's set to beginner mode, but you can switch to advanced mode for all these extra options. You'll be pleased to hear that we're not going to use any of these today, and the ones we're going to use are just these two right here. These allow us to create either individual users or groups of users. Now, a group of user groups of users even, are ones where you can have different departments. You can have people for logistics, for marketing, for sales, or in a home environment, you can have so that the kids have got a certain amount of access to some files, but adults, uh, distant relatives and more, or ones that have far more technical needs, therefore have more technical access. So the first thing you need to do is head into the user option. As you can see, we created an admin account already and a guest account is possible if you want to extend access to maybe the multimedia to friends that are staying. But for now, we're going to create an individual user by clicking create. We're going to give this person a name. We're going to go with Alan. We're not going to say who Alan is, but we can also give him an email address if we choose. So that means he can log in with his own bespoke login if we choose, or we can leave this blank in order so that he can log in with just his name. We'll give his um, username a password. We will then confirm that password and we can send notifications to that user if we included an email, particularly if that user has access to certain applications where notifications are very useful, such as surveillance. From here, we can then go forward with next. We can even disable that user's ability to change their own password to try to lock anyone out from trying to change their settings. But for now, we're gonna click next. From here, we can then decide what level of access they have in terms of groups. We've not created many groups right now, and I'll show you guys how to create groups later. But if you've created the groups first, here is where they'll be listed. But for now, we're gonna leave them as just a system default user. Next, we can say what folders they have access to. Now currently, we only have the one folder in this NAS, the 2.2 share folder that we created in the previous video. We can give them access if we choose, or read-only access so they can see the files, but not delete or add to them, or no access at all, so they won't even see this folder. For now, we're gonna give them read and write access, and then click next. And there you go. We've got our user who's got access to that folder, we can even limit the amount of storage space this user has to make sure that they don't fill up the NAS. For now, let's give this user 100 gigabytes of storage space, then click next. Now, if we've installed individual applications, they will be listed here, and you can say which apps this user is allowed to access. So for now, we're gonna let them access the DSM and file station and nothing else. 
then click next. And then you can now assign what their limitations are with regards to certain apps. So for example, if you've got multiple users using FileStation, but some of them are a priority more than others, you can make sure that some users have limitations on their upload and download speed to the NAS. Particularly if you've got home user environments where people are streaming multimedia, this may well be a very useful tool, particularly for ones that are backing up multiple devices under one account. Now it will ask us to confirm the settings we've created, which we'll do, and click Apply. And there you have it. We've now created our account Allen. So for now, as you can see on the screen here, we have got lots of different things we can do. We can install packages. We can view different folders and files. We've got different levels of access. We can do all kinds of things. But what about if we log out now and now log in as Allen? We log in here and we'll type in Alan's name and his password. We sign in just like we would normally with our admin account. But as you can see, installing packages and other options here on the desktop have disappeared. And we've only got access to FileStation as dictated earlier. We've made sure that Alan has only got 100 gigabytes of total storage space and cannot create any more than that. You can change these settings as an admin, but Alan does not have that level of control. Let's sign out and log back in as our admin account here. So now we've created one user, let's take it to its next logical step. If we go to the users, we've got a number of options open to us. We can import existing lists of users that we have or create a brand new user. We can even go into existing users if we so choose and copy them and create brand new users based on that exact same protocol. So say this new uh, person who we're going to call Barbara and Barbara, we're going to give her a different password like so. We're going to click next. Barbara is going to have exactly the same settings as Alan. And now they've both got the same level of access. We can create brand new users or we can continue to clone the ones we've got. There are other options as well where you can set limitations to different users, such as enforcing two-step verification and limiting where and how they can interact with the NAS, making sure they can only access on the local area network and not via the internet. There's lots of configuration options there available on the advanced tab. Let's create one more user. So we'll go there, we'll copy that user and we'll call this person Chris. That user there, we click next, and now we've created our three users here. Now, we've got three users all with the same level of access generally, but what if you've got even more staff than that? And what if you need to give groups of people different levels of control? And this is where we take advantage of groups. Groups are when we can assign different rights and privileges to a mass gathering of users. Given that this technology now supports many, many users simultaneously, this is a useful thing to do. Let's create a brand new group. We're going to call this group Sales. Moving forward, we can say if this group has access to any shared folders. In my case, I've created that shared folder there, but we can create multiple folders if we so choose. From there, we can give this group a limitation, not just individual users. We'll give this group a limitation of, let's have a look, we'll enable a quota of 300 gigabytes. We'll allow them to access pretty much everything. And we can assign them to have no speed limits whatsoever. Now we've created the group sales. And if we edit members, we can now assign individual users that we've created earlier to this group. So in this group, we're going to let Alan be in the sales team. We can also add other users if we so choose, such as Barbara, who's now in the sales group. These credentials will then override the existing credentials and we can move people around as we see fit. But say we want to create a second group. This second group, we're going to call them logistics. 
Now this other group, we're going to give them just read access to files, but no means with which to tamper with customer data. We then click next, moving forward, we give them no quota, and from here we only let them access file station. They can only access a file directory overall. We can then limit this individual user if we so choose of speed, and then create this new group. And in this way, we can make sure individual users have different levels of access, control, and speed. So you have a choice. You can create users first, groups later, or create groups and then add users. You can then even change the rules of users on the fly and groups very easily, given granting speed limits and file limitations as your NAS system grows, installing more applications and creating more folders. But what about installing apps? Let's talk about how to install apps on our brand new 2020 NAS. To do this, we need to head over to the package center. Make sure you've created a storage volume in advance. Once you've done that, you'll be able to see all of the applications that you can install from Synology NAS. Some of them will be installed by default and some will require updating over time. There are also beta packages available of brand new applications that arrive from Synology that you can test out before they're fully released. Installing an application is incredibly simple. Installing an app not dissimilar to the likes of iTunes or Google Play. Let's choose an application. We go for the multimedia server. The multimedia server gives you the ability for your TV, your movies, your box sets, your music and photos to be accessible via DLNA media devices such as Amazon Fire Stick, Smart TV and more. You can click on an app and find out more about it or you can just go ahead and click install here. And there you go. That is now installing there in the background quite quickly and will be ready shortly. While it's doing that, it's worth highlighting that some applications are more complex than others and require additional system settings to be installed as well as additional PHP installs to happen in the background. Take for example, after this is completed, the installation of a more complex tool such as Active Backup for Business with Active Backup being their large, premium and completely free um, one portal backup application for all of your devices. There's also versions for the cloud too. If we install this application, it's a far more complex tool and will likely ask us to install other background applications too. On this occasion, it looks like they're all included in DSM. So let's go for another application to show that we can install multiple apps all at once. Hyper Backup now, which is um, the NAS to NAS, NAS to USB, server to server, and NAS to cloud backup tool via a one portal access point is now installing. And as you can see, we now have multiple apps installing all at the same time. What we're gonna do now before we wrap this video up is talk about some of the key applications you're gonna need when using your NAS for home, business, or pleasure. If you're keen on making sure you've got a multi-tiered backup strategy, I thoroughly recommend installing the following apps. Active Backup for Business, Hyper Backup, as well as scrolling down the likes of USB Backup as well, which is already installed by default. These are tools that allow you to back up multiple tiers of your storage array in different ways. And if you want to interact with cloud servers, there's even dedicated cloud apps from third-party providers down below. If you want to utilize your NAS for multimedia, for enjoying um, your TV shows, your movies, your music and more uh, via the network or the internet, I recommend the following tools. Audio Station for enjoying your music, not just over DLNA, but via the supported tool for the likes of Fire Stick and Amazon Alexa, I recommend installing that tool there, although there are even more applications too. Have your own iTunes server by installing the iTunes server application. Install the multimedia server app if you want to enjoy your media over DLNA on slightly less smart devices. Keep scrolling down and you will find the likes of Video Station, which is a great alternative to Plex Media Server that allows you to not only have all the bells and whistles and metadata from movie descriptions, thumbnails and more on all your multimedia, but also access native transcoding 
of your files, as well as applications available for both Amazon Fire Stick and multimedia devices. It's a great app and I will be doing a full overview of just this one tool very soon. If you're buying your NAS as a Plex media server, however, then chances are you're going to want to take advantage of the Plex app. There is a version of Plex included to be installed from the App Center here, and it is a third-party app, and it can be updated with even newer versions of Plex 2, although the one included is still largely up to date and allows you to access your multimedia on this NAS via Plex on your mobile devices, desktop devices, and pretty much any client device that supports Plex. If you're a photographer, then chances are the following applications are going to be of great use to you. There are indeed two premium photo applications on the Synology NAS platform, Moments and PhotoStation. PhotoStation is more of an organization tool and one that allows you to create uh, bespoke timelines of your photos as well as create a detailed portfolio. As you can see, this is a tool that requires a bit of extra work there um, and, and add-ons to get running, which I'll do after this video. Next, it's Synology Moments. This is an AI-powered photo recognition tool that allows you to install decades of photos that you may have in your collection and then scans and the AI will look at the photos and not the file names but the photos and then produce a list of the detailed contents of your photos. Everything from scanning food, drink, locations and more as well as scraping metadata and background geolocational data of where you've taken the photos. It also recognizes faces and will create an entire um, breakdown of all of the people recognized in your albums and then allow you to scan and find them easily. As you can see, this is another tool that requires extra add-ons, which I'll do in between this and the next video. If you're utilizing your NAS on a file level, there are lots of apps for you for home and business. You can utilize Download Station to download lots of different kinds of file via the internet. There's RSS for your podcasts, HTTP and FTP for direct website downloads, and NZB and BitTorrent downloads or BT available via this one tool. There's also File Station for browsing um, files that we've talked about already, but also sc scrolling down, we have lots of different tools for accessing files in a far more direct way. We have Synology Office, which is comparable to Microsoft Office and Google Docs, allowing you to open Word Docs, um, PowerPoint presentations, and Excel Docs. Synology Drive, allowing you to have a one portal access point as well as file pinning and file streaming locally on your host machine, and even more applications and tools the more you look. And there's even more tools for those of you out there that want to replace the likes of Hotmail and Gmail, thanks to um, Synology's Mail Station app, and more. Install Surveillance Station if you're going to be utilizing IP cameras on your local area network. And again, this is quite a deep and big application too, so don't be surprised if that needs extra add-ons too. All of the add-ons are easy to download and install. As you can see, we have background tools happening now. And that's it really. That is how easy it is to install applications on your Synology NAS. As they are downloaded, they will appear here on the Start menu. And to open them up, you simply click and there you have it. That is um, a tool there opening at one click of a button. And I'm going to wrap things up here. In our next video, we're going to talk about some more applications in greater detail, as well as future videos where I'm going to show you guys how to access your Synology NAS over the internet. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.